I don't understand it. Sort of congestive heart failure. Short and long-term memory loss, decreased attention spans, lower reaction times, um, even involuntary contractions of muscles causing misalignments of spines and jaws. Breast cancer. We suddenly have breast cancer in women who have no DNA predisposition. Disrupted immune function and change in stress proteins. Reproductive and fertility effects. There are dozens and dozens of studies that show beyond any doubt what this uh, radiation is doing to our sperm. Now, if you take this, the, the cell phone out of your pocket, the sperm will recuperate within three to four months. What would not recuperate would be the damage to the DNA of the sperm. That is irreparable. The wife of the ex-governor of, of Indiana was diagnosed with glioblastoma. Same brain tumor Ted Kennedy have and John McCain had. Did you look at John McCain's car? This is a cell phone brain tumor. Um, LeBron James, one of our sports people, had a salivary gland tumor. That is another cell phone uh, uh, tumor. You didn't hear about it because immediately after that was discovered, he would pay, was paid by Samsung to become their spokesperson. We are seeing increases in, in brain tumors. Uh, we're seeing increases in Alzheimer's. We're seeing increases in uh, all of the neurotransmitter diseases, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, Parkinson's. These are all disease systems that are known to be associated with low-level energy exposures. We talk about 24-7, around-the-clock exposure, whatever you are and your whole body. You never get away from it. And it seems from our studies that maybe your immune system can cope with it for a time, but it will deteriorate. Then the irradiation will definitely damage cells at a deeper level, and the question is what will then happen? These are out of peer-reviewed papers, so these are not just hypochondriacs thinking that they're doing it. We're having real problems with this. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. So 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. There is scientifically evidence that is so strong that you can be certain that the standards used by the FCC to manage health effects are wrong. We need to start measuring how much radiation are people being exposed to before we roll out 5G? There are four kinds of electromagnetic fields that we know are harmful to human health. So radio frequency radiation, magnetic fields, dirty electricity, and electric fields, okay? Our exposure, any given person, and all humans are affected by EMFs. What is our exposure in a, in a day? It's not one cell phone. It's cell phones, it's multiple wireless networks, it's smart meters, it's cell towers. It's this sandwich and it all adds up. The data we're gonna look at are all published science, testing results, or public standards. At the bottom end of the radiation scale of what's called power density or signal strength is the minimum level at which cell phones will work, which was found to be 0.2 billionths of a microwatt per centimeter squared. Pine needles were found to age prematurely at 0 .000027. At short-term exposures of 0 0.05, children aged 8 to 17 experienced headache, irritation, concentration difficulties, and behavioral problems. Point 0.1 is the bow biology or building biology guideline for extreme concern. 1.0 produced sperm DNA fragmentation and a decrease in sperm viability in vitro. Also at 1.0, the science shows the following bodily effects can occur. Headaches, dizziness, fatigue, insomnia, chest pain, difficulty breathing, and indigestion. 2.5 saw altered calcium metabolism in heart muscle cells. 4.0, changes in the hippocampus affecting brain memory and learning. And at 6.0, DNA damage in cells. So where are smart meters on this list? Electrical Power Institute in December 2010 measured a single ITRON smart meter with pulses up to 7.93 microwatts per centimeter squared. Our own testing indicated approximately 8.0 with one meter. These tests are at a close distance, approximately one foot away from the meter, but an infant's crib could be just as close on the other side of the wall where the meter or bank of meters are installed. Even though there are all these known health effects at levels far lower, 
Switzerland, Liechtenstein, and Luxembourg see fit to set the standard at 9.5, and China, Poland, and Russia, 10.0. This is the same level at which behavior has been altered, producing reflexes of avoidance following 30-minute exposures. A room of 12 smart meters, very common and even a conservative number in an apartment building, tested at 19.8 microwatts per centimeter squared. This is hundreds of times higher than levels which clearly indicate harmful effects. So, how can utilities and governments get away with forcing these devices on everyone? This is how: in Canada, in the U.S., and several other civilized countries, the safety limit is set at 600 to 1,000 microwatts per centimeter squared. This so-called safety limit is literally tens of thousands of times higher than levels which are known to damage health, according to peer-reviewed published science. Faster, better, more reliable internet. That's the promise of 5G technology. But there is also the peril: health hazards associated with radio frequency that is higher, also, and requires more transmitters and in antennas. And the stark, simple fact is. The health hazards are unknown and unstudied, and that is a sign of neglect and disregard on the part of the Federal Communications Commission that seems unacceptable. There have been no answers so far. The FCC basically has said everything's fine, but in order to reach a conclusion about the health and safety of this new technology, we need facts. Chairman, thank you、uh, for having this hearing.、Uh, 5G, as you well know, also uses higher frequency waves that don't travel as far and will rely on a network of hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of small cell sites. And the question then is: Are there any health implications, any public safety implications, to those additional sites that are likely to be located? Close to homes, schools, workplaces, and closer and closer to the ground. Correct. Correct, Senator. Yes. So, my question for for you, particularly Mr. Gillen and Mr. Berry,、um, how much money has the industry committed to supporting additional independent research? I stress independent research. Is that independent research ongoing? Has any been completed? Where can consumers look for it?、Um, and we're talking about research on the biological effects of this new technology. Thank you, Senator. I, I think、uh, thank you for your focus on the issue.、Uh, safety is paramount, and as you alluded to, we rely on the expert agencies. We rely on the findings of the FDA and others as to the requirements to keep all of us safe.、Uh, there are no industry back studies, to my knowledge, right now. Happy to visit with you as to what. Uh, opportunities. You think there needs to be more studies, and we're always for more science. We also rely on what the scientists tell us. So essentially, the answer to my question: How much money? Zero.、Uh, I can so far only follow up with you, Senator. To my knowledge, there's no active studies being backed by industry today. Anybody else know of industry commitments to to back research? Fund it, support it, to ascertain scientifically the health effect. No, I'm not aware of any. So there really is no research ongoing. We're kind of blind, blind here, so far as health and safety is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're a trained medical professional. Yes. We don't have one on the panel. What are we to make with、uh, of the American Cancer Society, for example, telling us there's no evidence of of、uh, harmful product? Many of these organizations have conflicts of interest. Very briefly, if you can, what do you, what's your definite? What do you mean by conflict of interest? 
one of the first things that you teach residents is that you always have to look at the funding. There's a tremendous amount of sponsored research by people who are hired to do studies to find no effect. And that's plagued this field in a number of countries. The radio frequency radiation work that we did was supported by Motorola. The relationship was really very cordial and very stress-free, but only up until we started generating data. They, these folks were very, very upset and began to talk about how are they going to handle this, what sort of spin can we put on this, what can we expect from this, and from that point on the relationship changed. What we saw was that Motorola began to exert more and more control over the work, telling us what to do, telling us how to write abstracts, what to say in the abstracts, what to say in the papers, how to do the work. No, don't do this, yes, do it this way. This was unacceptable. I had completed our study of DNA damage, and I submitted the final report to Motorola. They simply weren't willing to accept my interpretation of my study, my evaluation of my study, my knowledge of science at that point, and tried to urge me not to publish the study. Did you hear about people coming to you as far as, uh, as, far as having complaints about uh, illness? We were made aware of health complaints following installation of smart meters, and we wanted to verify this uh, using our field work. So I measured the field of about 30 different people while they stood one foot in front of the smart meter, and in every single case, the uh, human energy field was obliterated as they stood in front of the smart meter. So in our first slides, what we see is normal cells, and the structure of the cells is intact and sound. This is what we would expect from a normal sample. So after two minutes of exposure in front of the smart meter at about one foot away, we see a totally different story. Sample one, you can see a lot of degradation in the cells. The cell walls have been broken, and you see changes in the cells, which are called mycoplasma. It shows a mutation to the cell. In the second sample, we see a different type of degradation to the cell membranes. You can see a corrugation here. This is called bottle cap formation, and it's known that this occurs due to oxidation or uh, exposure to free radicals. So this third subject, uh, when we did her sample, she had to be pulled away from the meter after 45 seconds because she complained about an increasingly severe headache. And here you see a phenomenon called rouleau, where the red blood cells are stacking up, which makes it very difficult for the blood to deliver oxygen to the tissues as they would be their normal function. Every single one of these is a degradation. Every single one of these shows a trauma to the blood cells and that came from something and the only variable was the smart meter. The good news in all this is the patient and the blood can return to normal once they have been removed from the influences of these stressors. Some of the effects um, that we can look at, well, one thing is, is just our regular Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz. That's in the same range as microwave ovens, which are also called radar ranges, because that is radar. 2.4 gigahertz is interesting. It's not the peak absorption rate in water for uh, microwave frequencies, but it's at a point where it allows full penetration, because if it came in at the peak, it would prevent the insides from getting warm. So that's with basic Wi-Fi. Now when we look at 5G, 60 gigahertz, this is um, what they call active dispersal sort of weaponry. 
just to keep people back. It burns the skin. It doesn't penetrate, but 60 gigahertz is the frequency of oxygen molecule absorption. Since um, they have electrons that they share with each other, what we breathe is actually O2, a pair of oxygen. So being bombarded with 60 gigahertz could very well impair our oxygen absorption rate in our body and thereby the whole basis of our living system. Martin Paul says, 